Hello, my name is Rupa Srinivasan. I am a developmental pediatrician and I head the clinical services at uh, Umid Child Development Center, a not-for-profit organization in Mumbai, India. In this video abstract, I'll present findings of a recently published paper in the Journal of Developmental and Behavioral Pediatrics. The study is titled Global Trends in Telehealth Amongst Clinicians in Developmental Behavioral Pediatric Practice, a COVID-19 Snapshot. My co-authors in this paper are Kate Wallace and Neil Kamal Suarez. Most of us know that telehealth usage prior to the pandemic was reported from limited parts of the world, such as the United States, Europe, Australia, Africa, with some papers from the Middle East and India. Specifically, the use of telehealth in developmental behavioral pediatrics was limited and mostly reported from high-income countries. So with this background in mind, we aimed to study the extent to which telehealth was used by developmental behavioral pediatric clinicians around the world, and also to describe any barriers that they were facing in adopting telehealth during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our hypothesis was that there would be a greater increase in telehealth usage during the pandemic for higher income countries. We used a survey that was developed for the purposes of this study. This survey was based on um, a version that was previously used and published by Wallace et al. And they gathered data um, in that particular study from US-based academic DBP fellowship programs. We refined the survey based on literature on barriers and conducted cognitive interviews with two international DBP clinicians who were eventually not part of the final study sample. The questions included in the survey were related to program characteristics, the trends in telehealth usage prior to uh, the pandemic and after the pandemic started, uh, the mode of technology used, the kind of diagnosis made and services offered, and the barriers faced in the deployment of telehealth. The survey targeted medical clinicians who were engaged in DBP practice or similar practice through our contact with international professional organizations, and we only excluded clinicians who had previously responded to the Wallace study. We used descriptive statistics for analysis. So 271 respondents from 38 countries completed the survey, and most of them reported DBP as their specialty. The majority of them were highly experienced and worked in academic settings and reported seeing patients who were located in urban areas. As expected, we found that 45% of our respondents were from high income countries and they reported an 85.8% increase in telehealth usage. We had 16% of respondents from upper middle income countries and they reported a 43% increase in telehealth usage. We had 38% respondents from lower middle income countries who reported a 68% increased telehealth usage, and we had limited representation from low income countries. 11.6% of the respondents uh, reported not using telehealth, and some of the barriers that they cited were concerns about effectiveness, workflow efficiency, and reimbursement. At an individual or patient level, the most commonly cited barriers included the patient access to internet, home environment distractions, and preference of the patient for in-person care. In conclusion, with respondents from six continents and all income regions, we believe that this is a representational snapshot. Telehealth users were predominantly from urban areas, and this highlights the continued disparities in telehealth access faced by rural populations. DBP clinicians were found to rapidly adopt telehealth during the pandemic, and they continued to have interprofessional practice while doing so, and as expected, the largest adoption was from high-income countries. Provider concerns about effectiveness and patient access to technology emerged as key organizational barriers and patient-level barriers, respectively. So support of regulatory policies and increased availability and affordability of high-speed internet in some parts of the world and safety considerations contributed to the increased adoption of telehealth, but there is a need to collect and share metrics around outcomes, patient access, and satisfaction to address concerns about effectiveness. There were limitations in recruitment in our study. There would likely have been a response and recall bias. We were unable to report a response rate and there was lower representation from respondents from low-income countries. These were our acknowledgements and we do hope 
that you take the time to read the findings of this study in the Journal of Developmental Behavioral Pediatrics.